Now, what I've done is I've selected a high-speed compression and a low-speed compression stack, and we're just building a two-stage stack on this particular model. Um, and this, again, is on my, uh, my little homemade tool. What I, I can take this, and I can either dip this or take contact cleaner and, and, and clean this off. Uh, use gloves when you do that as well. But uh, I've got a low-speed stack on here, and again, the, or, excuse me, the high-speed stack is a tapered stack starting with a small diameter washer ending with a large diameter washer. So we're going to put this on the shaft. This again is the base plate that's already clean. Uh, there's the washer underneath the base plate. Now what I am able to do with this tool, makes it nice and easy, is that actually stick that in the end and then I don't have shims going all over the place. But uh, on went the, the high speed stack and then the low speed stack goes on next, ending with the large diameter washer or the large diameter shim. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll take the gold valve. Again, I've, I've got my bleed already drilled in here. This is cleaned and loctited and deburred. What you want to do is you want to make sure that this surface is perfectly flat. Now these come surfaced from the factory. But what we want to do is every time you take this apart, if there is any kind of little dirt buildup or anything, what you want to do is you want to look at this and just surface it on that piece of plate glass with some 320 grit sandpaper. Um, and it's just something to be, be aware of all the time uh, whenever you take a, a shock apart. So again, this is the, compre the compression side, which it may be a little bit difficult to, to, to see on, the, uh, on camera here. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that the, that the compression shim is the right size for that side of the valve. In other words, this, on this particular model, this is a 38 millimeter shim and it covers those, those holes exactly. Now the rebound side on this one is a 34 millimeter shim. The end, end shim or the, uh, the first low speed shim is a 34 millimeter shim. The 34 millimeter shim will not cover this side, uh, the, the, the ports on this side. So these large ports go against the large shims. Then we've got a rebound stack, and I, again, I've, I've already selected a, a, a low, low and a high speed rebound stack, this being the low speed stack, and this tapered stack being the high speed stack. The low speed stack goes, the large diameter shim on the low speed stack goes against the piston face, and you, like I say, again, you make sure that it covers the entire port. Now, on some models, this one is lining up to about the perfect height. What, this is an extremely critical part of assembly here. This is the base plate for the rebound side. And if you've done a, a show a gold valve uh, on the forks, you'll, you're probably already aware of this situation. There is a lip right here. What we're going to want to do is really get in tight on this so we can see this lip. Basically what the end of the shaft, end of the shaft is, is straight, and then there's a thread relief, which recesses in here, and then the threads start. Now this is very, very important to know exactly where this thread relief is. This base plate, this rebound base plate, is thick enough so that you must make the base plate straddle that little lip. Now, again, this is something that's drawn out in the instructions as well, but this is absolutely critical that you understand this and do this properly. If this is down too far, what you need to do then is you need to add shims to the entire uh, thickness of this stack so that it does come up and straddle that, that lip. If this is too thick already with the stack that you have, call race tech. Do not proceed. So what you want to do, again, is make sure that this thickness of this washer straddles that lip. And in this particular instance, it's the perfect height. Now, if you do need to add shims to it, make sure that the shims that you add, you can take actually some of the shims, perhaps, that came off of the original, the stock valve. Make sure that they are larger in diameter than this last shim. In other words, if, they were, if you put on a smaller diameter shim than this one, it would affect the rebound damping. It would actually, instead of bending on this last shim, which is something that we call a clamping shim, it would actually be bending on a smaller diameter. So if you need to stack up shims, go ahead and stack them up, but use shims that are larger diameter than this last shim. Then go ahead and put this washer on, and then we provide a nut in the kit um, typically Showa, on the, on the big body shocks, typically Showa uses a, f a super fine thread which is 12 by 1.25 pitch. 
Kayaba uses a coarser thread pitch, which is 12 by 1.5. Now this is extremely important that you get the proper nut. Because obviously if you get the wrong nut on here uh, and, and jam it on, somehow cross thread it on, you, it could conceivably work its way off and the whole shot come apart creating injury. So you need to make sure that you have the correct nut for the shaft. Again, typically Showa is 1.25 pitch, which is a super fine. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to take a thread pitch gauge um, and actually check the thread pitch of both the nut and the shaft. If you have any questions, again, do not do this yourself. Have somebody check it out for you that knows. And what you want to do actually is make sure that this is perfectly clean and we'll use Loctite 271 or in this case, this is a, a, a competitor's brand equivalent here. What you want to do, this is a, the non-removable a high strength thread locking compound. You must use this and you must make sure that this, these threads are clean. So what you want to do, and it doesn't take a lot, but you take a you know, good sized drop of thread locking compound after these are perfectly clean and you go ahead and assemble this and then torque it down with a torque wrench. This particular model uh, gets torqued to 25 foot pounds. Refer to your instructions for your particular application and, and torque. And here's a torque wrench. And you want to make sure that you torque this down properly. And there may be some little thread locking compound or a little bit of Loctite or something left there. You want to make sure that you, you get rid of all that. If there's anything there. Cleanliness is extremely important in here. Then, basically this is, this is ready. What you want to do is you want to double check this. Hold it up to the light and look for your gaps in your crossovers. Basically your gap between your low speed and your high speed compression, your low speed and your high speed rebound. If for some reason there's like a little dirt there or a little lip there or something like that, that will show up by, by smashing that, that gap down. It's not a big gap, so you want to really take a careful look. See how everything's sitting against the face of the piston, making sure that you've got the, the piston on properly with the right direction. Um, and then once you're sure that that's all assembled correctly, you want to go ahead and put, this is called the uh, uh, piston ring energizer O-ring, which basically goes into that groove there. And then the O-ring is followed by a piston ring. Now this is, you'll notice that this is a dramatically different design piston ring than the stock piston ring. This has got a, what we call a notch cut on the end. Uh, this is a different material and a different design than the stock design. What we've done, what, what you want to do with the stock, the stock design is actually an endless piston ring. It's actually made out of a, 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 a Teflon, and so is ours, but it's a different compound. This is an extremely slippery compound and also very, very long wearing. What you'll find is that this O-ring wears very long as well. Now on this, uh, on the stock piston, what you want to do, if you're just, if you are strictly doing this and, and not installing a goal valve, and, uh, all you're doing is maintenance. One of the things that is extremely critical to check whenever you do a rebuild is you want to check and see the condition of that O-ring which is underneath this piston ring. And it, a lot of times people will take these shocks apart, tuners will take these apart and they'll go ahead and replace the oil but they won't have checked that O-ring underneath there. And so they'll put it back together and it still won't work properly. What you want to do is actually take a pair of calipers and measure across the outer diameter of the piston ring. And if you've got a piston, say, that is 30, uh, excuse me, 46 millimeters, that piston ring diameter, when you just lightly touch that, it's got to be larger than 46 millimeters, or you know that you've got to get inside here and replace that O-ring. Now, that is not something that is, that is extremely difficult to do, but is something that you, you have to understand and know how to do to do it. So what we'll actually do is, is take a, a little X-Acto knife and make a step cut, just like in our, our piston ring here. Actually take it and notch it 
and cut a step cut into the stock piston ring, that will expose the O-ring and you'll find that the O-ring has actually worn flat on, on one side. And you can go ahead and replace the O-ring. And again, that, all, all of those parts, including the piston ring, are available from Racetech. So again, if you're, if you're just doing a rebuild, one of the things that you want to make absolute uh, certain is that that O-ring is in proper shape. And so is the piston ring. Uh, another thing to check out uh, as well is actually look at the inside of the body. Sometimes um, sometimes the, the, the bodies will become galled or even worn out. And so you, what, what you want to do is, is uh, take a look at those, actually feel them with your fingers, uh, sometimes even take a dial bore gauge uh, and check to see that that's not worn out. If this piston ring has been blown off or is no longer on the piston, you can be absolutely 100% sure that your body, your shock body is worn out. So again, this is something that you want to pay very, very close attention to. So, uh, 